the problem of getting an engine to the stage where it can be mass produced. Ensuring operational use without reliability problems. In the flight envelope is a problem that is solved by a long period of testing and modifications, both on the ground at the bench and in the air. This requires a great deal of energy, substantial funds, designers, technicians, skilled workers and, above all, plenty of financial resources. In the field of inline engines, as in that of radial thrusters, Italy had a number of decidedly interesting projects in the pipeline. Projects that, if they had been promptly pursued, with an abundance of means and not dispersing resources that were certainly not infinite, would have provided the Regia Aeronautica, the power necessary for fast, competitive aircraft capable of carrying out the roles assigned to them. In any case, at the level of the best engines adopted by other air forces, this is not the case due to a number of aspects that it would take a long time to list and which very often also vary from engine to engine or manufacturer to manufacturer. In the absence of these domestic products, the Regia Aeronautica found itself having to opt for the licensed production of foreign engines. Attention was focused on the engines that equipped foreign aircraft that were entering the fighter role. In particular, those that were candidates for leadership in the sector in the run-up to the conflict that Italy had been increasingly aware of since 1935 was imminent. These fighters were essentially the Messerschmitt 109, whose qualities had been clear since the Spanish Civil War, and the British Spitfire. These fighters were both powered by inline engines. Because of what had happened in politics, Starting with the conquest of Ethiopia, Italy had moved away from Great Britain and was gradually moving closer to Germany, as it had been practically isolated from the other nations. So they turned to the latter to request mass production, under license, of the propulsion unit that had been powering Messerschmitt BF-109 since the second series, because in the first series they had a Daimler-Benz 600 and then switched to a Daimler-Benz 601. The latter engine, from which the Alfa Romeo monsoon engine was obtained, had some very positive features that had been carefully evaluated and appreciated, such as direct fuel injection and the hydraulic coupling of transmission to the compressor. Naturally, there were differences, as far as mass production was concerned, between the original Daimler-Benz and the Alfa Romeo, because Italy was not in a position, in all areas of this power unit, to guarantee the same technologies used on it, in a high volume production. So there was a job of readjustment to the Italian mass production possibilities of Alfa Romeo's departments. In fact, the advanced technologies that were in use at Daimler-Benz required large investments in personnel training, in the materials used, in finishing levels, in manufacturing technology, as well as state-of-the-art melting furnaces and a large number of machine tools, all of which had to be adapted to a large number of production runs in order to absorb the gigantic expenditure required to set up a large number of production and assembly lines. This could not be guaranteed in a short space of time, especially as we were only a few months into the conflict. Therefore, the power unit was somehow re-engineered by Alfa Romeo to adapt certain technologies that could immediately be used instead of the original ones. These changes led to a heavier power unit, which, partly for this reason, was less performing than the Daimler. In any case, precisely because of the difficulty of generating sufficient technicians, workers, 
engineers and sufficient production lines with related machine tools. Mass production did not develop as it would have been necessary to bring sufficient aircraft to the Regia Aeronautica's lines using this engine to meet operational needs. Just over 1,500 of this engine were produced in Italy, while in Germany alone, more than 19,000 were built. This highlights the great disparity between the German and Italian industries of the time. This engine and the Fiat A74 were the most widely reproduced engines in Italy during the Second World War. The fact that the Alfa Romeo was the engine used on the highest performing fighter aircraft in relatively large numbers in the Regia Aeronautica gives us an idea of the actual potential of the Italian Air Force. Notwithstanding the fact that the Italian aircraft using this power unit were, from a design point of view, excellent, 